the impetus for this experiment was uh, an observation originally by Louis Pasteur in his work, original work with anthrax in, um, about 100 years ago, and in which he found earthworms associated with um, dead animal carcasses, anthrax carcasses, and he um, hypothesized that the earthworms played an important role in the life cycle of uh, Bacillus anthracis, the agent of anthrax. We decided to look at, at soil survival because as part of our previous work we were uh, isolating viruses that could infect anthrax in order to extract therapeutic agents. And what I found was that there was a particularly abundant source in the soil and in these earthworm guts. And the only reason why these phages could be present is if there was a growing form of the bacterium there. We've gotten earthworms from the Rocky Mountains, uh, from, uh, from Martha's Vineyard, Massachusetts. Um, we've gotten them from out on Long Island, from my uh, parents' backyard in Pennsylvania, and then also right from the garden out here in front of uh, the building here at Rockefeller. Um, basically, we grow them in um, test tubes containing dirt to which we've inoculated the anthrax organism. And the type of anthrax we're working with in here is a, a sort of attenuated derivative of the anthrax, which does not cause disease in humans. What we found was that the um, form of Bacillus anthracis uh, that was infected with the viruses, um, this form is referred to as a lysogen, that these lysogens are capable of surviving in the gut of the earthworm long term, whereas the uninfected parental form, the non-lysogen, was unable to survive at all. So infection is now associated with long-term survival. They're really working together to survive in, in this environment. So the phage need the bacteria to survive in and, and to establish this relationship in the soil and to allow the phage to, to propagate and, and infect other bacteria. And the bacteria need the phage to, to bring in and control that environment for them so they can survive in the environment. So they're both working together. Without, without either one, they would never survive. This could reflect a, a much larger phenomenon that's going on in the environment, uh, long-term survival of bacterial organisms associated with stable infection with viruses. Most bacteria in the environment are infected with viruses, and it's um, the nature, the, the effect of these interactions is unknown. This could reflect um, something that is much more common than we originally thought of everyone's missed this other life cycle that it had that once it gets into the soil it could now survive in the soil under a variety of conditions based on the fact that they, the soil is loaded with bacteriophage and some of these bacteriophage will infect anthracis and depending on the type of phage that infects the anthracis channels it in one direction or the other. I think the more we understand what controls anthrax the more we have ways, again, to short-circuit those, those control mechanisms. And we may be able to devise methods by which we can short-circuit those perhaps real ones determinants and, and interfere with them very rapidly during early an infection.